Hello and welcome back to Von Milhausen Plays Gothic 2. In the last episode, um, which was quite some time ago because I wasn't feeling well the last couple of weeks, uh, we had just finished kind of clearing out uh, this part of the map we had uh, with the help of uh, what's his face up there, I've forgotten his name, we kind of cleared out this uh, bandit camp and we were on our way into town. Now I've just uh, actually finished recording this episode and you might be wondering, uh, if you finish recording it, then why are you still recording it? Uh, the game didn't record properly, so I'm hoping it's going to record this time. Uh, nothing too crazy happened. I have a save game that uh, I made about five minutes into the episode, which is what I've kind of loaded here now. So basically, I just kind of explored some of this grassy area off to the side and found some herbs and stuff. And then down here a little ways, uh, and I actually missed these herbs, so let me pick them up. Yoink and yoink. Uh, we find our friend, the uh, the bandit that ran away from the camp. So we can talk to him. Uh, we had a conversation option with him where we could give him 10 gold uh, to give us the name of the person that put the bounty on our heads. If you recall, um, the reason that he and his buddies wanted to murder me was because somebody had put up notices saying that, uh, look for a dude... Uh, the magician um, that we met at the start of the game uh, and he might have an associate with them uh, kill them both kind of thing um, so I gave him the 10 gold and he told me the name of the uh, person that put the bounty out was a guy called Dexter who lives um, there's a tower on a steep rock somewhere near the city and his hideout is somewhere near that tower uh, and we're not to tell Dexter who gave us the information. And I asked him if there was anything else that might interest me. Is there anything else do it that again. might interest me? I've told you everything I can. Okay. What he told us before was, uh, you know, go and explore, but be careful going off the path, because the further off the path you get, the more dangerous things get. Uh, so um, I moved on then from him, and I actually went up onto uh, this little plinth here and that's not how you jump um let's jump again there we go uh, and i was kind of exploring around here and i kind of pushed my way through the trees and kind of got this view out over uh this area here let me go first person and i spotted those fly things off in the distance and went ah i had better save and that is a save game that i've loaded um, so, oh, and actually I see there's some more healing plants in here that I missed. I missed a couple of things the last time around, apparently. So, um, there is, ah, sure, we'll, we'll cover it again in a moment. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to try and lure these flies off one by one. And let me just save the game again. Uh, I actually went all the way through the episode and had made my save game for the next episode. And I was like... Let me just go check that recording. It's been a while since I've recorded this game and it's finicky. And that's when I realized that my video file, instead of being about 2 gigs in size, was about 40 megs in size. And I was like, ah, crap. So, what I want to do is try and lure these flies off one by one. I do not want to try and fight three of them at the same time because I'm not really ready for that. So I need to inch close enough and try and get one of them interested in me. Like that. Okay, he's on his way, so now I can back off. Try and make him attack me, like that. I want to be out in the open, though. Ow, I shouldn't try to attack him twice, because I don't have the dexterity for it. Okay, I survived. I have half health. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. nothing to be had there. Um, I am going to continue to do the same for the other two, and I will bring you back. Uh, combat in the in this game isn't terribly interesting. Uh, one thing I actually mentioned in the uh, the last go of recording this episode was that I changed my configuration for the game to. Previously, I had been using uh, this Gothic controls, uh, Gothic One controls option set to on. 
which basically made the control scheme for this game behave like the first gothic game. Uh, I remember reading some stuff online just before I got sick uh, that made me think, hey, I should probably try switching over to Gothic 1 controls off. So I've done that. I can't remember what difference it makes. I think it's something to do with how, uh, how combat works. It's supposed to make combat a little bit easier in the long run. So I'm going to give that a go. I will go and fight these monsters one by one and I will kind of bring you back when they are dead. Okay, made fairly short work of that guy and didn't get injured at all. So there's only one of them left. I will go kill it and bring you back. And it's dead. So uh, I'm nearly dead myself. So let me very quickly, if I remember how to do it, uh, take a healing potion. Or maybe one of the healing herbs. I have 20 of them. Uh, how much do these heal? Let's have three of those because I've got a bunch of them and a meat shank. And now uh, mostly healed again. Okay. And I don't think these flies carry anything. Yeah, there. Nothing there. Okay, and the third one is somewhere else. Um, there is a shrine to Innos here, and interestingly, I can actually pray to this without any weird graphical issues with the patch. Let me just finish taking up these things first because they kind of get in the way of interacting with the shrine. Hopefully it's not a bad thing to take offerings from the shrine. This is a statue of Innos. And as you can see, I properly get the text down here at the bottom. Uh, if we go to pray at it, uh, we can pray and offer cash. I'm assuming it gives some kind of buff the more you give or something. Uh, I'm not sure I want to mess around with any of the religions in this game just yet until I know a little bit more about them. Uh, while I was luring the flies, I noticed that there is at least one and I think probably two wolves off over that way. So we're not going that way yet. But over here behind where the flies were, uh, we have a dude. So let us go and talk to him. Hey stranger, I saw how you came out of the mountains. You can be glad you didn't come by here three weeks ago. We would have taken you for an escaped convict. And we made short work of those. You look completely done in. What do you want here? Escaped convict, you say? Why, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I am on my way into town. I'm on my way to town. The way you look, you'll have to bribe the guys to get in. And you have to know what they want to hear. And that would be, well, for example, that you're from Lobart's farm and want to go to the smith in the city. But that won't do you any good. You don't look like a farmer. I see. Um, well, I was attacked by bandits in the mountains. I was attacked by bandits in the mountains. Those filthy rabble. They were probably the same bastards who took one of our sheep last night. You had terrific luck. Most people don't get away alive. Um... Those bandits won't trouble you anymore. Those bandits won't trouble you anymore. Why? Are they dead? They picked a fight with the wrong guy. Thank Innos. Here, it isn't much, but I want you to have it. I'll tell the others about this. So we got 100 experience points and three bottles of wine for that. That's pretty good. Although I would question why he's carrying around three bottles of wine in his pocket. Uh, I need better equipment. I need better equipment, I can imagine. But I tell you right now, we don't have anything to give away. If you can pay for what you want, Lobart will sell you something. Otherwise, go to him and ask him if he has work for you. Okay, where can I find this Lobart? Find Lobart? Well, on the farm, of course. The farm belongs to him. And don't try messing with him. He's thrashed a lot of tramps and thrown them off his farm. I've got to go. There's another of those scummy beasts. So when you talk to him, a, uh, a wolf spawns. Ah. Well done. Ooh. One dirty beast less. I got the kill for that. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got the kill, so I got the uh, 30 experience points. Because um, my understanding is that experience points are fairly critical Nothing in this game. Wonder. Uh, which is why I attacked the flies. The very first time I talked to uh, Melith there, not only did he come over and slay the wolf, and the wolf seems to spawn every time uh, you talk to him. There's an interesting lighting glitch going on there. 
but also when he was finished uh, catching the wolf, he was in, within range of three flies and he killed all three of those as well. Um, so I didn't want that to happen because I do want the experience. Can I talk to him again now? Out of curiosity? Nope. Okay, so um, the other thing I did in the previous recording was I came down here to this road and I was going to go to the farm. Then I was like, hey, wait, there's something off over there. And there's a dude over here to talk to. And I will replay the conversation that I had with him. Kanthar. Who do we have here? You're on your way to the city. Am I not right? Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> you look like a fugitive. All fugitives are headed for the city. You could even be a former convict for the mining colony. I don't care where you come from, but I believe I have an interesting offer for you. What do you have to offer? The way you look, the guards will never let you into the city. I can help you get into the city. I have here a small piece of paper with the royal seal and the governor's signature. A pass. With this scrap of paper in your pocket, you can run about as raggedly as you please, and the guards will leave you alone. Interested? Um, there must be a catch. There must be a catch to this. No, no catch. You will merely owe me a favor. Uh, how will you... No, wait, what do you want for your pass? What do you want for your pass? I knew you were the right man. Listen, you will get the pass from me, now. Just like that? Just so. But, if I meet you in the city, you owe me a favor. Do we have a deal? Uh, how will you get into town? How will you get into town? The guards know me. I will simply tell them that I have lost my pass. Uh, and I chose no. Keep your paper. No, keep your paper. Hmm. I seem to have misjudged you, huh? Well, do you want something else? Uh, can I interest you in my wares? Uh, show me your wares. Show me your wares. Take your pick. So, he has some nice stuff uh, for sale. So, for example, this longsword, which counts as a one-handed weapon, does 85 damage, which seems quite nice. He has a uh, an amulet of spiritual power, which gives him magical protection, uh, and a frying pan for whatever reason. Uh, but I, I decided not to buy anything from him yet, uh, just again until I know a little bit more about what I'm doing with this game. Hopefully, I haven't um, ticked him off. I don't know what long term uh, doing stuff for Kanthar gives you or doesn't give you. Um, I'm assuming there's some benefit to going through with his scheme, but I don't really know yet what kind of character I'm going to play, and I'm kind of trying to stay away from making too many decisions about situations that I know nothing about. Um, so until I get a better idea of, um, you know, how the guards are in the city and the politics there and stuff, I don't really want to screw around with him too much. So I've got to go. Suit yourself. And then the very last thing, oh wait, just while I remember, there's a plant behind him that I wanted to gather. Uh, so the very last thing that I did um, in the previous recording was I went up to the farm here. You can see there is a dude standing around outside. Uh, I don't know if people like wrap up for the evening and go to bed and make themselves unavailable, but I wanted to talk to him before potentially the farm closes. Why are you hanging around on my land? Whose side are you on? The rebelling farmers or the king? Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. What? Don't mess with me, boy. I want to know where you stand. So who are you for? Uh, I'm for the peasants. I'm for the peasants. Ha! Huh. That damned warmonger own R will drag us all into the grave. What do you think? How long will the paladins just stand by? After what Onar has done, the whole city is in an uproar. Um, what's going on? What's going on here anyway? Don't you know what's going on? Boy, where are you from? We're on the edge of a civil war. Up till now, all the farmers looked at the tribute to the city as fair taxation. But since the paladins have come to Corinus, the city guards visit us more and more often. And little by little, they're taking everything. 
If it goes on like this, soon we won't have anything left for ourselves. Some farmers are starting to rebel. Onar was the first of them. Tell me more about this Onar. Tell me more about this Onar. Onar is the biggest farmer here in the area. He is broken with the city. They say he's hired mercenaries to keep the city guard off his back. Can't blame him. In any case, no royal soldier dares to set foot on his farm anymore. Uh, who are the mercenaries? Who are those mercenaries that Onar hired? I don't know much about the guys. Supposedly a lot of them are former prisoners from the mining colony. Everybody knows what you can expect from them. <laughs> I have uh, no idea what you're talking about. Moving quickly along, uh, whose side are you on? What about you? Whose side are you on? Peasants or king? I'm too close to the city to really have a choice. But I'm glad about that. I wouldn't know how to decide. The king is bleeding us dry, and Onar sets his mercenaries on anyone who won't join him. And that's why most of the other farmers are still undecided, but sooner or later they'll have to choose one side or the other. And I'm looking for work. I'm looking for work. I can't use another farm hand, but I could offer some work to a day laborer. Well, what I mean is you can lend a hand in the field. And there are certainly a few other things to do around here. I could pay you with gold, or give you a few decent things to wear. The things are worth a fair bit. I can't give them to you for nothing, but I can sell them to you cheap if you work for me. By the looks of you, I should say, take the clothes. Anyway, the small turnip field next to the barn needs to be harvested. Um... All right. All right. Then hurry it up a bit before I change my mind. And before I get soaking wet and before it's the middle of the night. Um, have you got anything else for me to do? Have you got anything else for me to do? First get the turnips in from the field. Then we'll see. Uh, I need some sensible clothes. I need some sensible clothes. I can give you clean farmer's work clothes. Can you pay for them then? Um... And I guess that is the end of it. So that is as far as I got in the previous uh, failed recording. Um, so I think the next thing we're going to do, uh, other than take some shelter, and by the way, I love the stormy sky color, that kind of yellow brown into into gray. It's really cool. Um, so I guess the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, pick turnips from the field. However, it is now uh, pitch as night. I'm going to save the game just in case something terrible happens. But I want to go and take shelter inside this barn. Uh, I don't know if people will like consider trespassing to be a thing or not. Uh, and maybe I can sleep in this bed and do the turnips in the morning. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. And in the next episode, we will go and pick some turnips, I guess. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Von Milhausen Plays Gothic 2.